No, why aren't you charging? No, no, no. Oh, no. Are you serious? There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got your mind on. Well, shoot, my inverter died. Yeah, my inverter died. And of course, nothing ever dies when I'm close to some place where I can get it repaired. So, and it always happens right after I get settled and I'm ready to sit for a while. And what am I going to do? All right, we need to figure this out. I can't work without an inverter. I still have my suwaki. So I'm charging that up with uh, the generators on, my generators on. Yeah. Okay, so what is an inverter? What does an inverter do in an RV? So your entire RV runs on a 12 volt battery. I have two golf cart batteries, six volt each, which makes 12 volts. Everything inside my RV, except for my air conditioner and my microwave, runs off of battery power, which is called DC. So my refrigerator, my furnace, my water heater, my lights, everything in here runs off the battery. But if I want to plug something in, like my laptop or any lights that aren't USB or uh, things to charge my batteries for my cameras, anything that has a traditional plug on it that I want to plug in, I need an inverter. So my inverter has two outlets on the back. I put a power strip in it and I plug my laptop into that. So basically an inverter converts DC power to AC power, which is 110 or 120 volt. A converter, on the other hand, converts regular traditional 110 or 120 to battery power. So I can't really do much without an inverter. I need something to plug my laptop in. So the light still goes on, but it's not putting out any power. Bummer. So I ordered a short-term solution because I wanted to get an inverter, just wire it in, just like my old one was wired in. But this short-term solution has a, a cigarette lighter plug-in. So you basically just connect it to a cigarette lighter. It's a car inverter. You can either hook it up to your car battery or you can hook it up to if you have cigarette lighter plug-ins like I do. I've got three of them in here for my coach battery. So I got this as a short-term solution. Plugged it in. was super easy, but it was noisy. So this is the power strip and I have a thermometer plugged in. This is the tree light here. And this one is my Alienware laptop. And every time the laptop is plugged in, that loud fan. It doesn't even have to be on. That loud fan. Because the fan goes on either if it's 100, over 104 degrees or under a load. So the fan runs constantly and it's annoying. this certainly is not going to work. <laughs> I just bought this quick as a quick solution, but do you hear that? <laughs> yeah, that's no, no bueno. It also came with cable to hook directly up to your battery. So if you don't have cigarette lighter outlets, you can just hook it up directly to your battery. I'm kind of bummed out that this didn't work out for me because if it wasn't noisy this would have been more than enough of a solution it's a 750 watt inverter it was only $45 on Amazon I'll put a link in the video description if you want to check it out and it really provided all the power I needed like I said I don't run a lot just my laptop so it had the two outlets for the laptop it has um, where is it? I thought it had it has a USB and it worked fine for what I needed. So, uh, you know, if you want to check it out, if you're going to need something that's just plug and play, super easy, plug it into a cigarette lighter. You can plug it into your car cigarette lighter as well, but you're going to want to be careful that you don't run your car battery dead. I read some reviews that 
you can run your car battery dead with it so you want to be careful about using your car battery unless you're going to be charging it driving it's, you know if you're driving great but that's why it's perfect for an rv because if you have solar you're constantly recharging your batteries this is a good solution I read a review that said it kicked off if the RV battery went below 12.5 volts. I didn't have that problem. It, my RV battery, I think, got down to 12.1, 12.2, and it was still putting out power. So what it said is that it'll go off under 10.5. So, uh, you know, even with one battery in your van or car, this might be fine. Again, if you don't mind the noise and if you only need 750 watts. The one thing, though, you You'll notice it's in my hand right now it's not connected is I plugged in my, my neutral bullet one morning I got up I said this in my live stream and I wanted to make some oat pancakes so I was grinding the oatmeal I wanted to grind the oatmeal in my neutral bullet I plugged it into this I thought my neutral bullet was only 600 watts but I think it's I think it's 900 now I know I should have looked first I plugged it in and it killed it so it didn't even like it no warning it didn't blow a fuse because i checked the fuses unless there's fuses inside but it completely busted it just stopped working uh, so that was really disappointing i would have thought my old inverter would just shut off and the low battery light would go on if i was putting too much power on the old inverter and i don't even know how many watts that was i said 120. so I don't know what is up with this. The fact that I overloaded it and it died. It seems to me that shouldn't happen. But for 45 bucks, just make sure, you know, if you're looking for something cheap, just make sure you don't overload it. But it shouldn't have overloaded. I can understand a blown fuse or some kind of a safety, some kind of a safety or something like that. But to completely kill it because I tried a blender that didn't work on it. It said, I read everything, and it said to take it to a shop to get it fixed. I'm like, for $45, I'm not taking it to a shop to getting it fixed, so I threw it out the door. <laughs> so you might notice I really got mad and threw it out. But even without this little plug-and-play 750-watt inverter, which was a, really just a short-term solution anyway, I wasn't dead in the water. I was able to power my RV during the couple of days that it took me to get this. Uh, you know, I wasn't dead in the water. As long as you have a generator, and many of you know my onboard generator doesn't work. It, it worked for a minute, and then it didn't work, and then it worked again for a few days, and now it doesn't work again. but I have the outboard generator. So that's how I was able to get by. It took me a few days to get back into town. And so I ran the generator, which really is unfortunate. I mean, I have all this solar charging my batteries, but it wasn't doing me any good, all that battery power, without something to invert, convert my battery power to 110 to be able to plug in my computer so I had to run my generator for several hours a day just so that I could plug in my computer and work I also have this and if you'll remember this is a Suwaki battery bank so this worked out really well I'd run my generator for a few hours every day while I worked but then I would also charge this battery I have outlets on it you can see I also have there's also USB where is it? There's also USB on the front. So this battery bank, I can run my laptop, I think for like five or six hours, maybe longer. So while the generator was running and I was working, I would also charge this. And then at night, I could, while I watched TV or finished up work, I could run my laptop off of this. So I didn't have to run the generator like 12 hours a day. So that's a good, you know, short-term solution. So I wasn't dead in the water without an inverter. Just like a lot of things, you know, living in an RV, you have to improvise. And when things aren't working exactly as they're designed to work, when things break down, that just means you have to jump through a few more hoops uh, to get things working, you know, the way you're supposed to, <laughs> you know, or to get things working so that you can live on, you know, you can continue to live comfortably and with the things that you need.
So I do have another solution. I installed something. It's still a work in progress trying to make it work. So once I get that all straightened out, I will let you know Be, because uh, it's a mess right now and I still have to figure out how I'm going to make it work on a permanent basis. But uh, I, all right, I hope you found this interesting. I hope that you found this helpful, gave you some ideas or some hints about how to deal with power, electricity, whether you're in a van or RV. I got to tell you that Suwaki battery, they sent it to me. It was a promo. Uh, I, they spon a sponsorship and that has come in handy m on more than one occasion when something breaks when my solar is not working right and I have to run the generator and I have that as backup power bank it's really come in handy I think it was about a hundred dollars uh, 150 maybe I can't remember and I don't think they're available anymore but I'm gonna put a link for you in the video description of something similar that you can get for your RV van or car if you need additional power because like I said that's really come in handy in cases where things just have broken down and living in an RV living on the road living anywhere but it seems especially living on the road things are bound to break down so we'll talk more about let power and electricity and my new verter in a in the next month or so but i hope you found this helpful and stay tuned for the round two of my inverter fix coming up in the next few weeks be sure to subscribe to my channel and i'll see you next time in the meantime be happy be free and be kind i'll see you soon